Hi everyone, this is Nate Johnson from FlyPlugins.com and welcome to this tutorial video where we will be discussing setting up a survey within your WP Courseware course. This is the main menu for this video. The chapters within this video are listed below. At any point, you can click on one of these links to be taken directly to a topic within this video. And from throughout the video, you can always return to this menu with a link at the bottom of your screen if you need to go to a specific segment within this video. So let's go ahead and get started. We have the WP Courseware plugin installed and activated. We can simply go over to the Training Courses tab on the left-hand side of our WordPress admin panel, and we would select Add Quiz Survey. Now we're taken to the Add New Quiz Survey screen, and you can see we have some settings tabs across the top of this page. We're first taken to the General Settings tab, where we need to enter a required title, so we'll just plug one in here. We have an optional survey and description, this will not display on the front end for your students, but simply can be used for your reference when you go into the quiz summary screen. So we can place an optional description. Next, we have the quiz type. So we're going to want to, we want to select survey mode uh, to set up a survey. This is just to collect information from your students. For example, if you need feedback on your course content, you could place a survey within one of your course units. So we're just going to go ahead and save our settings. Next, we need to go to the Quiz Behavior Settings tab. And you can see that we have two options within the Quiz Behavior Settings when we're in survey mode. The first is whether or not we want to display survey responses. So if you want a student to be able to return to their survey and review their responses later after submission, you can allow them to do so. So we'll go ahead and select that. Next, we have the option to paginate our questions. We can either select to use paging or no paging. If you use paging, the students will scroll through one question on the screen at a time. If you don't use paging, uh, all, all survey questions are displayed at once on the page. So we'll go ahead and select paging. And when we do that, we see that we have a few options here. These aren't necessarily as helpful for surveys as they are for quizzes, but we do have the option to allow students to review their survey, their survey responses before submitting them. If we're using pagination, once they get past the final question, they'll be presented with an editable list of all questions before they submit those. Second, we have the option to allow students to skip survey questions and answer them later. Finally, we have the ability to allow navigation to previous questions or disable that. So whether or not you want them to be able to move both backward and forward through those survey questions. So again, we'll just save our settings. Next, we'll take a look at the result settings tab. And this doesn't have many options in it when we're in survey mode, but it does allow you to display results by question tag. Now you have the ability with version WP, uh, version 3.0 of WP Courseware and up, you have the ability to tag quiz questions for use in uh, randomization and also for sorting within the overall question pool, which we'll talk about shortly. But uh, you do have the option to display survey responses by question tag if you choose to do so. Finally, and most importantly, we'll head over to the Manage Questions tab, and this is where we're actually going to create our survey by adding questions, uh, which will be displayed on the front end for our students. And as you can see over on the right-hand side of the screen here, we have six different question tools, uh, options for adding questions to our survey, basically. We have the ability to add multiple choice. We're not going to talk about true-false, because in survey mode, there is no true-false answer. Uh, we'll be talking about the open-ended question type, file upload, how to add questions manually from the question pool, and finally, how to add randomized questions from the question pool. So I'm gonna start off by adding a multiple choice question, and I'm just going to fill this out, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I've added my multiple choice question. As you can see at the very top, I have the question itself. This is the text that will display to your students on the front end. Next, we have the ability to add an image just below our question if we need to do so. Uh, we could either enter an image URL in the field, or we could select an image from our WordPress media library. Finally, we could upload a file from our desktop if we needed to. So I'm just gonna close that for now. 
Next, we have the ability to randomize answers. And again, this isn't necessarily helpful for a survey. It's more for use in quizzes. But uh, say you had 10 answers within your multiple choice question and you wanted to randomly display five of those answers, you could do that here. Again, uh, of course, the correct answer is always going to be displayed no matter how many you choose. We'll just deselect that for now. Next, you can see we have answers. Right now, we have answers one, two, and three. We have the answer text, which uh, the student can select on the front end. Again, we have the ability to add an image to that answer if we choose to do so. And I'm just going to scroll down. I want, I want a fourth answer uh, for this particular question. So as you can see, we can add or subtract the number of answers that we have within our multiple choice question. Next, we have an optional hint. Uh, again, not something that's going to be used terribly often in a survey, um, but you do have the option to just add a small hint field if you need to do so. Finally, we have the question tags. You can add a tag to your question. This is going to relate mostly to sorting questions within the question pool, adding randomized questions if you need to do that. We'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, but you can add a tag to your question uh, straight from within the Manage Questions screen. Next, I've added an open-ended question to my survey, and you can see that Within this uh, question type, we have the ability, ability to add the question. Again, the question image if we need that. Next up, we have the size of the text box that we want to display on the front end. So this depends on, this is sort of a guide as to how much input you expect from the student. Uh, so you can select a single line of text, a small text box, which is about four lines medium, which is about eight, or a large box, which is about 15 lines of text. I'm just going to go with a small box for this. Again, we have the hint if we need that. And finally, the ability to add our question tag. So we'll drop one in there and I'm just going to save this. I've now added a file upload question type to our survey, similar to the open ended. However, uh, there, this question type allows you to require that the student upload some sort of file, uh, which you can collect on the back end as the administrator through the grade book. So again, we have the question itself, the image, then we are able to select the permitted file extensions. So whatever you include here, uh, these are the file types that you will allow the students to, uh, to upload. Don't use the dot, just use the uh, extension type. Uh, if it's not in this list, they will receive an error message on the front end if they try to upload a file type that has not been permitted. So you can include those here. Again, the hint and finally the tag. So now that we have created these three questions and saved them within our survey, they are all now added to the question pool so we can discuss the last two question tool options. First, I just want to scroll back up and go over to the left hand side of our screen under the training courses menu. You can see that we have a question pool option. So if I select that, we can now see that the questions, the last three questions that we added to our survey are now added to the question pool. We have the question ID, we have the question itself. We have the question type, the number of quizzes or surveys it's associated with, and the tags that we created for those questions. Within the question pool screen, we can filter our view by tags if we only want to see questions related to a specific tag. We have the ability to search our questions. We can sort by ID, question, or question type. And finally, we can edit the question from within the question pool screen. And again, any changes you make by editing a question within the question pool screen, those would appear globally in any associated quizzes or surveys. Finally, we can delete that question from the pool if we need to. If we scroll down to the bottom of the screen, we can see that we have some bulk options for use with tags. We could select all of our questions or multiple questions and we can provide, a, we can use an action for these selected questions. 
We can add a tag in bulk to one or more or all questions. So we could select all of our questions and add a tag to all of those questions. We could remove a tag from all of the selected questions. Or finally, we can globally replace all instances of a tag. So if we want to replace all questions, if we want to remove tag A from all questions and replace it with tag C, we can do that here and we would simply update our questions. So now that we've taken a quick look at the question pool, I just want to scroll back up and go back over to the training courses menu and head down to the quiz summary. And you can see that our test survey, which we just created, is listed within the quiz and survey summary screen. We see the title, the description, which again is optional. We have the quiz ID, which you may or may not need to use. Uh, we have any units that that survey is associated with. Currently, we haven't associated with it with a course unit yet, so we have uh, NA. We have the quiz type. Obviously, it's a survey. Uh, show answers is not, um, not displaying any information because it's a survey. You can see that we did select paging. We can see the number of questions that we have within this survey. We have the ability to edit the survey, uh, delete it, and finally, we can export the responses uh, after we collect responses from our students, and we'll go over that in just a moment. But for now, I'm going to go back in and edit this survey, and we'll go back to Manage Questions. And now we can take a look at these final two question tool options. You can see that we have the ability to add questions from the question pool, which we just looked at. And what this does is allows us to simply manually select our questions that we want to add to the survey. So we could select one or more and add those to our, uh, to our survey. We have the ability to filter this screen by tags. We can search questions if we are looking for something specific. Um, so the question pool is great because it, is a, it allows you to recycle your questions. You don't have to recreate them anymore. You can simply go into this screen and add it to a new quiz. So we'll just close that for now. Next, we'll take a look at the Add Random Questions tab. I'll just click on that, and that's going to bring up our Insert Random Questions screen. As you can see, the first option allows us to randomly select questions for our survey from the entire quiz pool, and this may not be extremely helpful for a survey, uh, but you do have the ability to select a number of questions randomly from across your entire quiz question pool, regardless of tag. Second, you have the option to set, select a specific number of questions from one or more tags. So if you needed to add uh, three questions from tag A to your survey and three questions from tag B, you could do that here. Each time the survey is presented, it will randomly display three questions from each of those tags. Um, so you could just insert that selection into your quiz and as you can see here, um, we now have a random selection box telling us that every time that this quiz or this survey is presented, it's going to display three questions from tag A and three questions from tag B. Um, so you have that option as well. So I'm just going to delete that randomize selection box for now. Take that out. I'm going to scroll back up. And as you can see, once you add questions, multiple questions within the uh, manage questions tab it does become sort of cumbersome to scroll through them so you can now click on the compact questions or expand questions uh, tab over here on the right hand side of the screen under the question tools and that'll just condense it down so that you can scroll through them easily uh, move them around if you need to do so you can reorder them uh, without having to scroll through so many uh, so many questions on the screen so i'm just going to go ahead and save this so now that I have created my survey, I need to place it within my WP Courseware course. So first we'll go over to the Training Courses option under the Training Courses tab. We're going to go into a test course that we've created, so I'll simply go over to Modules, Units, and Quiz Ordering. Next we're taken to the Ordering menu, and we have a course set up with several modules and units. I'm simply going to go down in our unassigned quizzes uh, screen here 
and I've found our test survey one that we just created. And I'm just gonna drag that over to our first unit within this course. And then I'm prompted to save the ordering. So I'll save our changes here. And that was successfully saved. So now I'm going to flip over to the front end, log in as a student and show you what this looks like for participants. Okay, so now I've logged into the front end of our WordPress site here, and I've located the course unit in which we placed this test survey that we just created. And if I scroll down, I'll see that right here. I'll see the title of our survey, Test Survey 1. Since we did choose to paginate the questions, uh, we're only presented with one question at a time, and we're told which question we're uh, currently answering within the sequence, so we're on question one of two. We can see the question itself, and since this is a multiple choice question, we have our uh, answer options down below here. We did choose to allow students to answer later if they'd like to skip a question and then come back to it before submitting. Uh, if we did answer this question, we could save and move on to the next question. I'm just going to go ahead and answer later, so we'll pass this one up for now. Um, we're taking to question two. This is our open-ended question type, and again, we selected a small text box. So we have that here, again, the option to answer later. Um, and we could skip this if we needed to. We'd be taken back to question one, obviously. Um, we have the ability to navigate to previous questions since we chose that in the settings and the save and review answers option. So I'm just gonna answer the questions here. Okay, and since we chose uh, to allow for review before submission, we can see that on the next screen here that we can review our answers before we submit them. Uh, we have a list of our questions that we answered, and these are editable right from within the review screen, so we could change anything we needed to here, and then we'd simply submit our answers. Then we're presented with a message thanking us for our responses and telling us the unit is now complete. And since we chose to allow students to be able to return to this unit and review their survey submissions later, we could move on to the next unit. Uh, and if we come back to that unit, those survey responses are going to remain in that course unit for them to review at any time. So now that we've completed the survey as a student, I'll just flip back over to the back man, uh, admin panel and uh, show you how to collect this information as an instructor. Back on the admin side of our WordPress site, we can now navigate down to training courses and we can go to the quiz summary screen. And once we're in the quiz and survey uh, summary listing, we'll see our test survey up at the top here that we just created. Um, we'll see the information that we saw before. We now see the associated unit that uh, for the survey we created and we have the ability to export responses from this survey. So I can just click on that and that's going to download a CSV file. And if we open that CSV file up, you can see that we have several columns here. We have our trainee names. We have our trainee email addresses. We have our first question within this survey, which was the multiple choice question. And we have our responses below. Obviously there's only one student and one response, but uh, these columns would fill up with the, uh, the data collected from the surveys and you could sort that or tally it as you needed to. Uh, finally, we have the second question here, which was our open-ended question type. So all that information goes into the CSV file and can be pulled at any time as students are progressing through your course and taking their surveys. So hope you've enjoyed this comprehensive look at how to create and use surveys within WP Courseware. And of course, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.